present to you the Supporters Choice video for August 2023. The topic of this video was selected by our Fusro and Fusro Da tier supporters on Patreon and YouTube memberships. Every month I present three options for those supporters to select from. And this, my friends, was what those individuals voted for this month. I should say, I should say that it was a very close poll. The Skyrim adventure game video show and tell that you're going to see here won by a single vote. One single vote. <laughs> and the other two options, which were a antique bookseller role play or a summer beer tasting video were both tied. So they're only one vote behind and tied. So it was a tight race this month and a big thank you to all this channel's Fusro and Fusro Da tier supporters who voted. And if you, dear viewer or listener, uh, enjoy what I do here, have ever found any respite or relaxation, would like to uh, continue seeing me make the kind of content that I do and, and support what I do here, uh, I would be humbled if you would check out my Patreon or my YouTube memberships. There are links right down at the top of the video description. Each one is effectively the same, basically the same perks, and uh, there are multiple tiers there, and I'm sure you can find one that is right for you. A big, big, hearty thank you to all of this channel's wonderful, generous supporters on Patreon and YouTube memberships, and to all of those who might be considering joining up. All right, I'm done my pitch, <laughs> but I wanted to let you know that that is available should you be interested, and that this video topic was selected by those legendary supporters. So the topic that these supporters have selected is a Skyrim adventure game show and tell. So this is a board game, and it came out, I want to say maybe last year. It was um, on a crowdfunding site for quite a while. Oh, I don't know when it was, a couple of years ago. And, uh, and then finally, eventually it shipped. I think it was last year. At any rate, my younger brother and I went in uh, half and half on this game. You can probably get it elsewhere now. I suspect you can just buy it right now. But um, yeah, this is a cooperative board game for one to four players set in the world of The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. And it's a big one. It's really big. There is so much going on in this game. Now, I must make it clear, I have not played this game yet. Uh, I have not had the opportunity. Uh, it's one of those things where you really have to plan a special get-together, you know, with friends to tackle a game of this scope. Um, but I have opened it up, and I have, uh, you know, perused what's inside, just to get a sense of what the materials are like, and how the game plays. So, to 
today's video is not going to be a gameplay tutorial or anything like that. It's really just going to be looking through the components, enjoying some of the art, the flavor text, and uh, just sort of getting a sense of the, the aesthetics and, um, you know, what kind of game it is, I guess. So, this box, once again, very big. I was not able to fit it all on screen or on camera at once. You can see here, though, it does say The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. And down here we have the adventure game, Bethesda and Modifius. Modifius, which I guess is the uh, developer of this board game, I suppose. Not quite sure, but given their name is on it, that seems like a reasonable guess. And uh, there's other stuff on the other sides of the box, <laughs> but honestly, it's it's too big and heavy for me to lift it up and turn it on the camera. So instead. We're just going to take the top off and get right into it. So, top lifts off. have this beautiful and probably familiar piece of Skyrim key art on the front here. You've probably seen it before. It's a gorgeous one. You will put that over here. And so uh, we actually we didn't order just the base game, but we ordered the expansion as well as the uh, extra box that adds a bunch of miniatures. Uh, all the monsters and things uh, are available as miniatures, but not in the base set. And I think because we backed it early and we crowdfunded it or whatever, I think for that we also got this special pack of septums, metal septums, um, or maybe that was because we paid more, I don't know, <laughs> maybe it was just a part of the bundle deal, I'm really not sure, but uh, let's take a quick look at those. So, septums are, of course, the currency of the Empire, and uh, you find them all over in Skyrim, strangely even in ancient Nordic barrows. Don't ask how they got there. But uh, these ones are nicely made. Although not quite as nice as the septum that came with the Oblivion Collector's Edition, which I don't have here, unfortunately, but some of you might remember, might recall, that there was a larger, more robust septum uh, that came with that. But, uh, as far as game tokens go, these are nice, nice little additions. Make for a, a fun experience, I imagine, when you're exchanging gold for goods or what have you in the game. Uh, there's a lot going on in this game. Uh, there is of course, adventuring, 
traveling across the landscape of Skyrim. There is building your character, leveling up skills, uh, gaining spells, gathering equipment. There's crafting and enchanting and equipment upgrading, all those things you know and love from Skyrim. There is uh, encounters with wild creatures. There are dungeons. There are um, all manner of quests, including um, a main quest storyline, a scenario. And that is what this book here presents. Scenario book. So in here is contained actually two scenarios or two campaigns. We have campaign one, the blades, campaign two, civil war. Lovely picture of solitude here. Yeah, blue palace. And um, each campaign is comprised of three chapters. And um, my understanding is when you play this game cooperatively, uh, each player kind of has their own story that they're following, their own objectives and quests that they're taking on there with, you know, give them reason to move around the map and level up and whatnot. Um, and sometimes players might help one another in those tasks. Other times they might occasionally hinder one another, but it's generally cooperative. But then there's also this overarching main quest, which progresses over the course of multiple games, multiple play sessions. And, um, and this brings the players together at various points to achieve common goals. So, uh, campaign one, chapter one, let's read the setting here. A group of blades escapes the great war in Cyrodiil, hoping to find a safe haven in Skyrim. Once they're there, they try to build a normal life, but conflict follows them. The Blades are, of course, or were at least, the protectors of the Emperor, and uh, they feature prominently in the stories of Oblivion and Skyrim, naturally. Uh, the events of this adventure game precede Skyrim by some years. So that's the setting there. And I won't actually, well, maybe I will, I guess. I don't want to spoil too much for you here. Um, well, that's a neat piece of art. Look at that. Beautiful. Is that, uh, is that the statue of Nocturnal? not nocturnal. Who is that? I should know. Maybe that's nocturnal. Um, oh, I see. Right. So then if we flip it over on this side, we have a tutorial. And as far as spoiling the story goes, my understanding is there are many different ways the main story can play out, and uh, the route that you take through the story, and even the specific story elements that you get on each playthrough are randomized uh, by means of cards. So as you'll see once we get further in, there are a ton of cards in here that describe different quests, scenarios, and settings, and encounters for dungeon delving. So this is the uh, tutorial, and uh, we can flip 
through here. So there's actually a tutorial mission here, which presumably would uh, introduce the concepts of the game and also some story elements as well. And uh, that's all laid out here. Tells you how to play the first turn, dungeon setup, all that. All in all, it seems like a fairly faithful conversion or adaptation, I guess, of the video games mechanics into a board game format. And here is the rulebook, <laughs> and it's pretty hefty, as you can see. I mean, it's not enormous, but it's, it's not small either. So this contains everything you need to know, and a nice map, which is also the game board. I mean, the, the full-size game board is, is in here, but event cards, quest cards, dungeon and encounter cards, follower cards, status cards, item cards, enhancements, upgraded and enchanted weapons, and armor. There are lots of cards and lots of things to do. Visiting the market, combat, exploration. It's all very nicely presented. So, uh, there are six options for the player character. I believe maybe two additional ones with one of the uh, expansions. Uh, but by default, you can play as an orc, a high elf, a Khajiit, a Nord, a Dunmer, or an Imperial. And there's lots of game components in here, so let's look at those. Let's look at those. These are player cards that keep track of a variety of things, different kinds of tokens, and player progression. So you can see around the outside are uh, spots for you to have piles of different kinds of cards. But there's also places on the card here for you to put little chits that uh, will track your progress in various areas as your character grows stronger and presumably gains status conditions and things as well. But it's a little intimidating, <laughs> uh, but I'm sure when I do finally get around to my first game, it will eventually all make sense. I'm actually curious, have any of you played this game? And if so, what do you think? Did you enjoy it? It seems to have good reviews. It's got about, a, I think, 8 out of 10 or so on Board Game Geek. And that's pretty solid. And you know, there's not... Well, I shouldn't say there's not, but... Good cooperative adventure games are actually rarer, and I really enjoy cooperative board games. And of course, I especially love The Elder Scrolls and the Skyrim setting, so, uh, you know, I, uh, this game is right up my alley. So this is, of course, the game board it over itself many times, <laughs> uh, and we will uh, open this up a little later once we've looked at the other components. I love the sound, so that this textured cardboard makes.
it's all really nice quality, very heavy card. And uh, same goes for all the components, they all feel very nice. So we have this tray to help us organize many of the components, which is actually quite crucial <laughs> because there are so, so many. Let's put that over there for now. Is that going to stay if I put it there? Yes. So I believe combat is resolved with a special die dice for uh, various kinds of checks and uh, you can see we've got the Imperial logo there, some kind of not work thing. Mm, maybe that's it. Oh, what's that? I don't know. Is that Dark Brotherhood, maybe? I actually don't remember. If these are for combat, I don't know what they mean. Yeah, what is that symbol? The something. Um, but uh, we have quite a few of those dice. And then also, also, this red one in here. Maybe the red one is the combat die. I honestly don't know. This will be the last you see of dice on the channel in the next little while. You'll definitely be seeing some more dice soon. And some very nice ones. Yeah, this looks like a combat kind of related thing. We've got some kind of like lightning bolt, a battle axe, skull, a blank, cross swords, fireball. But they're all six sided. And I don't know what these are for, but we have all these little multicolored blocks, maybe status. Uh, tokens or something, and all these little black and white ones as well. Important for something, no doubt. Then we have all these different kinds of cards, which uh, I did take out of their plastic and sort into piles, although whether they're sorted in a way that's logical for the gameplay. I don't know. These are clearly equipment cards. Iron battle axe. Iron armor. Oh, restoration. Magic. Healing. Novice robes. I would kind of like to get little card sleeves, little protectors for all these cards, but there's hundreds and hundreds of them in here a lot of card protectors and take a long time to get them or get them all sleeved. Potions of magicka, some fists, the punch attacks, potion of minor healing. Um, Enchantment and upgrade cards, more equipment cards, more equipment, lockpick, orcish great sword over here. I don't know what all these are. Thane of Winterhold. Thane of the Pale. Amulet of Mara. You can get married. Check it out. Hmm. More equipment. Mephala's ebony armor. Cool. All kinds of neat stuff I would like to like to dig into sometime soon. I keep saying to my brother and my some of my buds, we gotta get together and do this, but it's 
is the problem with being an adult, you guys. <laughs> you finally have a bit of disposable income to get cool stuff like this, and then you don't have time. You just have to really make time, prioritize it. But uh, here we have some very fancy cards. These might have also been a um, crowdfunding bonus item, but these ones are foil. Check them out. Got some Daedric artifacts with foil cards. They're also much heavier. They're like little cardboard. We've got Maroon's Razor, which is actually the weapon that my Skyrim character is using right now in my Twitch playthrough. My Twitch playthrough. That's Mittens, the Kajit, for anyone who might remember <laughs> or who comes out to my Twitch streams. Still playing Mittens, the Kajit. Mace of Molag Ball. Soon's Battle Axe. Okay, so some of these are just other, other rare or noteworthy equipment. The Gloves of the Pugilist. Forge Master's Fingers, Tins Armor, Predator's Grace, Mythic Dawn Robes. Cool. And then underneath here, there is, of course, much more. Much more. Oops. Using structural integrity over here. Running out of room to place these things down. Let's do that. There. So here we get to the meat of things. We've got our miniatures. Come on. Our minis. One for each player character. Here is looks to be an Altmer. An Altmer. They come unpainted. You could, of course, prime them and paint them if you wanted, which I might do because I've recently acquired some paints. I recently started painting minis again. These are far from the last miniatures you will see on this channel in the near future. Similar to the dice, there's some Cool stuff coming. This looks like a Bosmer, maybe? Hard to tell, not actually sure what race that one's supposed to be. Well, this is definitely Orsimer, an orc. They're nicely detailed, these minis. I think they'd paint up really nicely. 32 millimeter scale. So I have here just the player character ones, but um, is that maybe the Imperial? Here uh, depicted as a mage. Slinging spells. Um, yeah, because we bought that additional pack with all the, all the enemies, the monsters and whatnot. I don't think we'll have time to look at that today, but here is the Kashit. With a steel mace, ready to smack a fool. Maybe it's Inigo the Brave. And this is the Nord, <laughs> clearly. Beautiful ornate shield. Yeah, the models are nice. They look good. And then, in addition to those characters. We have all these cards and these boxes. Um, these little little boxes are player save boxes. So this allows you to 
save your character's progress, so to speak, from one session to the next. Because remember how I mentioned that this is meant to be played over the course of numerous sessions. I think one chapter per session is the idea. So that's at least six sessions. And then we also have the Dawn Guard expansion, which adds, I believe, another entire scenario of three chapters. That'd be nine sessions. And of course, that's just one playthrough, but it can play out differently each time, is my understanding. The product page claims hundreds of hours of potential gameplay. How similar or different those hours are, I could not say. But that's a lot. These boxes make such nice sounds. Different things and then potentially leads to different 
kinds of questing. This is, I guess, a follower. It says so there. And so these numbered cards allow you to. Um, wow, well, there's more in part two. Um, allow you to jump around in different quest lines and have branching storylines under the weather. So just like in Skyrim, you have all these various quest lines, the morning after part one. Um, you start at a grove in Falkreath, a uh, nature spot in Falkreath. Hold. What happened? The celebration got out of hand. My head hurts. It's cold. Where are all my things? I find a note beside me. First clue. Can you find us? A series of runes are scribbled underneath. On a success, I find the solution to the riddle. I'm told to go to the Bard's College in solitude, ready to face my initiation. On a failure, I can't focus. A voice echoes in my mind. The Bard's College, you wet blanket. Don't be late. So it looks like on this one, whether you succeed or fail, uh, there are mechanical consequences. There's different uh, uh, icons there. But the story consequence is the same either way. I gather my meager belongings and start walking towards solitude. During the journey, I reflect on the consequences of having too much fun. And you move on to the morning after part two, just right here. Anyway, these quest lines look like a lot of fun. And as you can see, because there are hundreds of them, literally hundreds, your experience could be very different each time, right? Um, and that's pretty darn cool. Um, I love the flavor that they managed to impart just with a few lines like that. It really does have the, the feel of uh, a quest in Skyrim. So tons and tons of those. And uh, I think that probably constitutes the, the bulk of the variety uh, in the gameplay from, you know, session to session. How are we over here? Oh, these are uh, the player character cards. And then dungeon challenges for the campaign, the story quests. Uh, I don't know what these cards are. These are event cards. Let's look at a few of those. A Daedric Invasion. Move one Daedric token towards the nearest stronghold. If it reaches the stronghold, degrade it and remove the token. If there are no Daedric tokens on the board, place one on a nature space. Uh, horse thief preparing for the storm. It's a world quest. Vampires on the road. Contract on cultists. History repeats. All events. And it looks like each one is quite different. Some of them have you know, success or failure outcomes. Others just seem to have a single outcome. And again, they're nicely, nicely made. You know, they feel quite robust. Now, somewhere in here, I believe, there are more foil cards. I'm just looking for them because they're pretty. <laughs> but I, I don't quite remember where they are, what group of cards they're with. Oh, we've got some baddies here. Minecraft, Skeevers. series of 
these chambers and occurrences in dungeons. So you see some of them are things like traps or enemies, but some of them are locales, like a hidden mine shaft, or, um, I don't know, a sealed reliquary. Well, that's more of an item, I guess, but I think some of them are like a side tunnel. Anyway, it just seems like there's a lot. It seems like there's a great deal in here. And uh, this is really reminding me that I, I must play this. I think these might be the foils. There they are. We've got some shiny enemies. Spring and Earth Mother, Joris Hunter, Frozen Fulmer Shaman, Fulmer Shadow Master, Wisp Mother. Arch Necromancer, Ancient Frost Atronach, Ancient Flame Atronach, Dwarven Centurion Army. Bad news. Storm a Dwarven Centurion. Fun stuff, friends. Fun stuff. So, that's a very, well, I was going to say quick, it wasn't that quick, but that's a very high level look at the major components in this game. And once again, I don't really know what most of them do, but once I play it, once I play it, I'm sure I'll have a better sense of it. Perhaps then I can answer some questions for you in the comments and whatnot. Should you have them. I really, really need to just <laughs> arrange time to play this with some friends. Uh, just be proactive about planning it because otherwise it'll never happen. Let's put these back. There's one more thing to look at here, which I promised. And that is, of course, the game board. The game board, which is quite large, I believe. And I'm not sure that I will have enough space to fully expand it here. But we will see what we can do. So I'm going to move this out of the way. And I'll see what I can do about laying it out. Alrighty. Here it is. Now, how does this unfold like so and then like so <laughs> oh yeah this is gonna get oh gosh what is going on here this is gonna get complicated very quickly This is the, the right way up, anyway. Uh, okay, all right. Hmm. Okay, am I ever gonna be able to fold this up again is another question. <laughs> oh gosh. Let me move my audio interface over here. Out more easily, hopefully, and also those septums. Those septums can go over there. Okay, so this folds down. Now I know you're only going to be able to see a fraction of this anyway, even if I do manage to get it all folded open. Uh, okay, so here. This fold out then. What is going on? What is this madness? Oh gosh. Uh, oh, there, okay. I think that's alright. I think we're doing. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. there. Almost there. Ta 
Ta-da. <laughs> okay. Well, you, dear friends, have no way of really appreciating the scale of this game board, but you can probably appreciate that it is a large map of Skyrim. And uh, we have all your favorite locales. We've got Winterhold up here. We've got Windhelm. Uh, we have Riften way down here. I can't really show you because I'm already bumping into my uh, arm for the camera there, but trust me, Riften's there. White Run right in the middle. Dawn Star up here. Fall Creek way over here. And way over with this way, which I cannot show you. We have Markarth, Solitude, and Morthal, which you can see. But it's a beautifully detailed map. There are clearly uh, you know, hold boundaries. There are roads going between various points of interest. And you could see how the quests take you to different places. They direct you to different areas. Presumably that then influences what you can do from there. Uh, you know, maybe things happen on the roads in between. I know that, you know, there are roaming monsters. There's wilderness you can explore all kinds of stuff. So, uh, I wish I could show you more, but I literally don't have space to move it more than, more than it's already moved. You can see from the scale of my, my hands here. This is big. And then, also because we backed it, and because we, yeah, got in early and bought the big deluxe version, we also got a um, like a desk mat version of this map, uh, you know, it's like a, like you'd have, well, like, like this desk mat that's underneath here, you know, uh, that you see in all my videos. It's like that material, um, but it's got this map on it, so you can roll that out. Maybe I should have brought that to show you instead of this. It would have been easier to manage, but anyway, this is what we've got. And that is that, really. That is the show and tell with the base game. Now, as I've mentioned a couple of times, there is an expansion, uh, the Dawn Guard expansion, and uh, then there's another supplementary um, box that comes with all kinds of miniatures. And then I think there is a player expansion that adds up to six players in total, rather than just up to four. And I think another expansion on top of that that adds more mechanics and things, so. And maybe, maybe in the time since we, you know, backed this and, and received it, perhaps even more content has been released. I don't know, I don't know. Either way, there's clearly more here, even in just the base game, than I can shake a stick at. Probably more than I'll ever play through. And this has re, uh, you know, reignited my resolve to actually organize a play session with this thing because it's just so darn cool looking. So darn cool. You know what else is really darn cool? Or who else is really darn cool? Our amazing patrons and channel members who kindly support what I do here, give me uh, some independence from sponsorships and whatnot, and, uh, you know, uh, allow me to uh, continue making the kind of content that, that I really enjoy. And also, some of whom voted on this video topic. So once again, a big, big, big thank you to our patrons, and uh, especially our Foos Row and Fusro dot your patrons for voting on this topic for today's patrons pick slash members choice video. And um, if you would like to vote in next month, well, you know there are links down below at the top of the video description where you can check out both the Patreon and the, the YouTube memberships. The same perks available on each. Um, and hopefully you can find a tier there 
what's right for you if you would like to gain those perks and if you would like to uh, more directly support what I do here. Well, thank you for watching, my friends. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found it interesting. It's always fun to bring out something Skyrim-themed on the channel. It's so nostalgic for me. Skyrim is just such a cozy game and setting. Always will be. And I would love to hear from you. If you have played this game, I would love to hear about your experiences, how you found it, what you liked or didn't like. So please feel free to let me know down in the comments. Thanks again for watching, my dear friends. And I look very forward to having you back here next time. Farewell for now. All right, you already know what the deal is with the Patreon and the YouTube memberships. And I don't want to sound like a broken record, so... I'm just going to jump straight into the good stuff. And the good stuff is me reading out the names of our legendary Fus Ro Da patrons and YouTube members from this video. Starting with Jake Luffney, Odin Son, K Time, Rango Steel, Drummer Brit, Angel Garcia, Scad Vena, and rounding out the list, one Ragnar Ragnarsson. I appreciate these individuals so very much, as well as all of our amazing supporters that you can see here on this page, or slide, or whatever you want to call it. I don't really know. This screen, we'll call it a screen. Anyway, I'm just going to leave it at that. You already heard me give you my spiel about the links down below in the video description uh, at the beginning and end of this video. So thanks, supporters. 